A lot of people are taught to take the club back low, slow, and in control. And I'm here to tell you, that's not that powerful. One of the first bits that I changed in my long drive career was the takeaway. I agree with you. Back in the days, it was all about control when I took away the club, but that in combination with a trigger, a shift, and a takeaway of the club is super powerful when you do it swiftly. I love the word swift because no, we don't want to rush it, but we want to do it swiftly and with authority. Because what that does is throughout the rest of the swing, it's actually helping you with one speed because the backswing is gonna be a lot faster. And then on the downswing, when we talk about tempo, which is the ratio between the backswing and the downswing, you're probably gonna be faster already, but especially for seniors, right, when they're struggling with range of motion, it's a lot easier to rotate when you do it faster compared to a slow rotation that at some point is getting stuck. So it's a lot easier to stretch a muscle when you do it swiftly. And yeah, we don't wanna rush it, right? At some point it's getting out of control. But this like maybe first one and a half feet of the takeaway are super crucial for a powerful backswing. All right, Martin, so I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. Kyle Morikawa, he's won a lot, he's made a lot of money, very slow backswing. That's very true. Maybe with a fast backswing he would have made more money, but no. <laughs> No, I don't think so. You always find outliers on tour. I could be like, look at John Rahm, look at Rory McIlroy, look at DJ. All these guys have a fairly swift backswing. And well, it's a swing your swing thing, right? Eventually, if it works for you, yeah, 100% stick to it. You square the face like that, Colin Morikawa, probably one of the best ball strikers on the planet. Yeah, stick to what you're doing. But do I believe that he would be faster with a swift takeaway, 100%. Does he have to be faster? I don't think so. He's fast enough to play out on tour. So he's doing a lot of other things that we talk about in the full program of hitbombs.com very well. It's not always about pushing all these buttons and like raise them to the max when we wanna play golf, but we wanna be aware of them and we wanna utilize them eventually. Well, Colin Morikawa, I wouldn't necessarily recommend you to utilize a swift takeaway, but for a lot of guys out there, especially when you lack in a little bit of range of motion, when you struggle with speed, this could be the very first thing that creates the basis of your swing for more speed. So Martin, you mentioned the term swift takeaway. What is the difference between a swift takeaway and just a fast erratic takeaway? So swift in my world is fast but controlled. Okay. With authority. And I actually love this drill with a stack because, well, earlier we learned that we want to shift our body to actually take away the club. And now we want to make use of that to make this club head go swiftly when we take away the club. The idea about this is really focus on like these first like two and a half, three feet of takeaway and make that go fast. Don't try to rush it up here. Don't try to be fast up here. It's really about this first bit that already does a lot for the rest of the swing already. Now, what I would be focusing on is, okay, bounce to the left, shift right, and now try to make that club head whistle. That's what it's about. And this is a swift takeaway. This right here would be a fast out of control takeaway, right? I'm just trying to like slam it back. That's not what it's about. It's really sticking to the mechanics, boom, shift, make that club head whistle. So mechanics plus speed equals bombs.